On May 18, 1969, an Apollo rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center. Three men traveled over 240,000 miles from Earth to the moon. After three days, they arrived in lunar orbit, a mere 100 miles from their final destination. Two men entered the lander and began to descend towards the lunar surface. But with less than nine miles separating them from lunar soil, these men activated the ascent thruster and began to pull away from their destination. They had traveled over 200,000 miles to get here, but over the next three days, they would retrace their steps and return to Earth. The commander of this mission would never return to the moon. Nine miles separated him from this moment. What happened here? What could go so catastrophically wrong that these men would turn back on the greatest achievement in human history? What if I told you this was the plan all along? Hello, my name is Matthew, and I've been lurking around the video game industry for a while now, and I've been noticing a couple of issues that tend to pop up when someone sets out to make a game. The first thing that happens is they fail. I never finished my game because the dream just got too big. But the other thing that happens is they succeed and yet no one cares. I recently spent some time learning about the Apollo program, and I think I found some interesting solutions to both of these problems. When I was a kid, people often asked me the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? It was kind of a stupid question, right? It's like the most important thing in life is that I get the opportunity to shove my foot somewhere and leave a mark. It implies that my title and status are the thing that really counts. I think a better question might have been, what kind of world do you want to live in when you grow up? And personally, I didn't grow up with dreams of being a video game developer. Speaking plainly, I've been looking for ways to combine games and theology, and to tell meaningful and impactful stories. So the dream isn't just to become somebody, it's to take part in something larger. I personally want to live in a world where art leads the worldview conversations that we have. I want to see this media move past the profit-fueled rut we seem to have gotten in. Uh, this is art, not just a business. And ultimately, I want to live in a world where people regularly say, yeah, I played this video game and it changed my life. Like, not to say it doesn't happen today, but it's still really rare, especially when compared to the other arts, uh, like literature. Let's bring this back to the moon for a bit, though. Uh, Thomas Stafford was the commander of Apollo 10. If his lifelong dream was to walk on the surface of the moon, then his life was a failure. Like, he never reached that goal. But if his dream was to live in a world where men regularly walked on the moon, not only was that dream realized, but he got to play a significant and important role in making it a reality. Over the duration of the Apollo program, only 24 astronauts got to visit the moon in some capacity, and yet there was an estimated 400,000 people who contributed to this program in some way. The moon doesn't need any more footprints. However, this world does still need visionaries who are willing to dream bigger than themselves, and I hope to be one of them. I do have a dream game, of course, and I do want to be a game developer. But these need to be incremental goals. Like if I can support my dreams for the world by making videos or by doing something completely different, that's okay too. Uh, with that said, right now I am on a personal mission. I want to make a game that explores theological concepts and tells a compelling story. And this game isn't it. By the way, this is technically my second devlog for Space Rock Survivors. Here's some footage of me writing the unit test for the saving and loading of the user settings and configuration options. Yeah, game development can be really boring sometimes, which is why I'm talking about the moon this month. I will be back with more normal devlogs in the future, fingers crossed. Actually, this is the start of me trying to take a more research approach to making a game. So I'm going to be forming and testing a number of hypotheses as I go. With a track record of zero released games, I'm not in a position to give advice, uh, which is why this video is applied primarily to me, not to you, but I think it could be useful to make a few videos that ask direct questions about how I get from here to there, so stay tuned for that. To finish out the devlog portion of this devlog, I'm making a roguelike with scientifically accurate CRT vector graphics. As a firmware engineer who has studied electromechanical components and converting those into digital representations, this seems like something I can do really well, so leaning into what I'm good at. Uh, the game is done. Placeholder audio effect. Placeholder done. audio effect. And the rest of the journey is going to be turning a finished but bare bones game into a game worth playing. Uh, so yeah, that was the devlog portion. Back to the moon or something.
This leads me to the second problem. I do have this personal dream that involves me personally releasing a video game that tells a compelling story or a game that explores theology in an interesting way. Uh, that's my ultimate goal, my Apollo 11 mission, if you will. The game that I'm currently making <laughs> fails to meet these goals. Usually a compromise success is worse than actual failure. Like when I released a cancellation announcement, people gave me a lot of kind words. This is an underdog story, we're gonna do this. But when I released a tutorial that did really well and tempted me to focus on channel growth at the expense of actual game development, no one felt sorry for me. Uh, actually, people have been asking me to forget my dreams and focus more on that, which is fair, they don't know my goals. But if I'm not careful, I could end up a thousand miles away from my destination without ever realizing that I failed. So how can I present you this game that doesn't meet my core objectives and still say that I'm on course? Well, this video was initially inspired by this video. Uh, this is Dustin, he runs a YouTube channel, and these are the people who are trying to bring us back to the moon. Uh, the whole video gets a massive recommendation, by the way, but I just wanna show you this one small part. Um, this is how they planned out what missions they were going to do when. Basically, you don't take baby steps, you take significant steps because you actually have to go towards the goal and there will be risk involved, but you make sure that the risk isn't too big so that the engineers on the ground can't learn the lessons. Huh, that's a really good way to approach large problems in general and not just space missions. So each mission took the biggest reasonable step that they could towards the goal. Like the Apollo missions, I've experienced failure. Uh, thankfully, I haven't accidentally killed anyone, but failure still sucks, right? I do see people occasionally succeed on their very first try, but let's remember this is the internet. For every one success you see, there's a thousand failures you don't see. A small game is still massive when compared to a game jam prototype, for example. A lot of people try to make their dream game first, and I know I see a lot of advice out there already encouraging people to start small, but I've struggled to make a small game that will satisfy my big dreams. I've already done this, and I've restarted multiple times because I couldn't find a way to turn my novel into a short story. So letting go of my dreams is paradoxically the path I'm taking to achieving my dreams. Apollo 10 was considered a dress rehearsal mission. They went all the way to the moon, went through the entire process of practicing a landing, just to ensure there were no surprises when the real thing happened. And do you know how long it took them to turn around and launch the next mission? Two months. Yeah, flying this mission not only gave them confidence for the next one, but it wasn't even that big of a delay. If they had skipped this mission, they would have still had to wait one month for the final lander to be ready, and they would have been risking the final mission by flying into the unknown. This mission seemed unnecessary to some, but it proved absolutely crucial in hindsight. And that's why I'm deciding to fly my own Apollo 10 mission. Uh, to be clear, I'm having a lot of fun making this game. I do believe this game will be worth your time when it's done, but it's ultimately just another video game. Like there isn't any magic sauce here because I'm still learning to follow the basic recipe. And I think that should be more okay. In a zero sum game where everyone wants to be a bestseller, like you should just be okay with making a game that's good, especially at the start. So I'm gonna take time to do this mission right. I'll be exploring topics like accessibility or marketing, and it might sound like a waste of time to spend so much time on the packaging when the game isn't that massive. But again, I believe that this work, one, is necessary, but two, it can be reused in every game I'm, I make going forwards. Like, I've already learned how to make games. Now it's time I learn to finish them. In conclusion, I want to see the video game industry go new places. And while I absolutely want to be a part of this change, I also recognize there are a lot more talented developers out there who might have similar dreams. I don't ever want to see them as competition though. If we're dreaming the same dream for the world, then it isn't about who gets there first, it's about us getting there. I also need to slow down and accept that big missions take time to prepare for and practice. Uh, I need to be willing to fly a personal Apollo 10 mission, uh, ship a game that might not quite land. Again, I'm putting this game on Steam. I hope it is good, I hope it does well, uh, but it's not gonna be able to carry everything that I wanna put into a game. Because ultimately, I'm not just building this single game, I'm building a career personally, uh, but I'm building my own ability to contribute towards the world of my dreams. This video was a little bit harder to make than some, um, went outside my comfort zone and involved a fair bit of personal reminders that I might need to hold on to. Uh, speaking honestly about who I am and why I'm here also takes a bit of practice, so thank you for being here as I start to sort these things out. I'm trying to finish Space Rock Survivors as well as the 20 Games Challenge within this calendar year. We'll see if it all fits on the calendar in theory. 
Um, as always, I'd love to hear any feedback on this one. I'm still figuring out what my style of devlog actually is. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.